Good day. I am Rolly Dumandan and we will discuss the life and mathematical contributions of Joseph Louis Lagrange. An Italian by birth, German by adoption, and Frenchman by choice, Joseph Louis Lagrange was next to Euler, the foremost mathematician of the 18th century. When he entered the University of Turin, his greatest interest was in physics. But after chancing to read a tract by Haley on the merits of Newtonian calculus, he became excited about the new mathematics that was transforming celestial mechanics. He applied himself with such energy to mathematical studies that he was appointed at the age of 18 professor of geometry at the Royal Artillery School in Turin. The French Academy of Sciences soon became accustomed to including Lagrange among the competitors for its Benial Prizes. Between 1764 and 1788, he won five of the coveted prizes for his applications of mathematics to problems in astronomy. In 1766, when Euler left Berlin for St. Petersburg, Frederick the Great arranged for Lagrange to fill the vacated post, accompanying his invitation with a modest message that said, it is necessary that the greatest geometer of Europe should live near the greatest of kings. For the next 20 years, Lagrange served as director of the mathematics section of the Berlin Academy, producing work of high distinction that culminated in his monumental treatise, The Mechanic Analytic, published in 1788 in four volumes. In this work, he unified general mechanics and made of it, as the mathematician Hamilton was later to say, a kind of scientific poem. Holding that mechanics was really a branch of pure mathematics, Lagrange so completely banished geometric ideas from the mechanic analytic that he could boast in the preface that not a single diagram appeared in its pages. Frederick the Great died in 1786 and Lagrange, no longer finding a sympathetic atmosphere at the Prussian court, decided to accept the invitation of Louis XVI to settle in Paris where he took French citizenship. But the years of constant activity had taken their toll. Lagrange fell into deep mental depression that destroyed his interest in mathematics. So profound was his loathing for the subject that the first printed copy of the Mechanic Analytic, the work of a quarter century, lay unexamined on his desk for more than two years. Strange to say, it was the turmoil of the French Revolution that helped awaken him from his lethargy following the abolition of the old French universities in 1793. The revolutionists created two new schools with the humble titles of École Normale and École Polytechnique and Lagrange was invited to lecture on analysis, although he had not lectured since his early days in Turin. Having been under royal patronage in the interim, he seemed to welcome the appointment. Subject to constant surveillance, the instructors were pledged neither to read nor repeat from memory, and transcripts of their lectures as delivered were inspected by the authorities. Despite the petty harassment, Lagrange gained a reputation as an inspiring teacher. His lecture notes on differential calculus formed the basis of another classic in mathematics, the theory dysfunctions analytic. Although Lagrange's research covered an extraordinarily wide spectrum, he possessed, much like Diophantus and Fermat before him, a special talent for the theory of numbers. His work here includes the first proof of Wilson's theorem that if n is a prime, then n minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod n. The investigation of the conditions under which positive negative 2 and positive negative 5 are quadratic residues or non residues of an odd prime, negative 1 and positive negative 3, having been discussed by Euler, finding all integral solutions of the equation x squared minus ay is equal to 1, and the solution of a number of problems posed by Fermat to the effect that certain primes can be represented in particular ways. Typically of this is the result that asserts that every prime p is congruent to 3 mod 8, 
is of the form p is equal to a squared plus 2b squared. Thank you.